Big Sam Hotday was a very important man in Helena, Montana Territory. He wanted to be even more important and insisted that I write about him. This is what I wrote. Frontier Gentlemen. account of life and death in the West. As a reporter for the London Times, he writes his colorful and unusual stories. But as a man with a gun, he lives and becomes a part of the violent years in the new territories. Now, starring John Daner, this is the story of J.B. Kendall, Frontier Gentleman. fascinated me, this lusty city, which owed its very existence to the discovery of gold. It was the evening of that fourth day that I was made aware of the fact that my presence in Helena was a newsworthy event. I was eating my dinner in the Hotel Colorado. Uh, Mr. Kendall? Uh, yes? Uh, the name's Coleman. I uh, don't think we've met. How do you do? I'm the manager of the hotel. Thought maybe you'd like to see this. Rocky Mountain Gazette. Oh? Uh, right there, see? Oh, yeah. Yes, sir. Correspondent for the London Times visit our fair city. Uh, that's you. Well, I wouldn't exactly say... I got the whole that... story about you and the kid and them claim jumpers you brought in a few days back. <laughs> it has. You know, we're mighty proud to have a visitor from foreign shores with us, Mr. Kendall. Uh, anything I can do for you, you just sing out. Uh, very kind of you, Mr. Coleman. Uh, will you be uh, staying a while? Oh, no, no. No definite plans. I'd like to do one or two stories from here. Yeah, kind of put Helena on the map if you did. Mm -hmm. uh, you might... Uh, mention my hotel while you're at it if it's not too much trouble. No, no trouble at all, Mr. Coleman. That's fine. I I'm obliged to you. Much obliged. Now, you be sure... Is something wrong? Those fellows just come in. Walking over to the bar, Ed Jeffers and Tucson Willie. Uh, Big Sam's boys. Big Sam? Hey, you've been here four days and you ain't here to Big Sam hot day? Uh, should I? He kind of runs things, him and his boys. Got mixed up with the vigilantes a few years back, and, and nobody figured yet which side he was on. But when the shooting was finished, Big Sam was top dog in these parts. Uh, I'm surprised I haven't met him. Uh, between you and me, Mr. Kendall, he's not the kind of man we hey, want. you. You, Kendall? Mm, yes, that's uh, right. <laughs> Good evening, Ed. Uh, Take the hawks, Coleman. Me and Tucson here, we want words for this fellow. Uh, sure, sure, Ed. That's fine. Uh, see you later, Mr. Kendall. Can talk about it. Mister, I guess you just didn't hear me right. Big Sam wants to see you now. Mm. Well, you tell Big Sam I'll see him. He can come to the hotel in the morning. Man, you should not even think like that, let alone talk it. Hey, mm -hmm. you son, this place is getting real fancy. Look here. They lay a cloth on the table for a man to eat off it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I've seen a fellow do that once. He walked the cloth off and not a dish was broke. It stayed right there on the table. I'm sorry you did that. Mister, you try and draw iron, I'm going to shoot you full of daylight. Uh, Tucson's got the drop on you, Kendall, for a fact. He's an awful fast gun. So I see. Hmm. This uh, friend of yours, Big Sam, he must be rather anxious to see me. Oh, Sure. Big Sam just wants a nice, quiet talk. Ain't that so, Tucson? Yeah, yeah. So let's burn the breeze out of here. I was relieved of my gun, and we left the hotel. I noticed that most of the men passing by gave my companions a hurried nod and a wide berth as we made our way down Main Street toward the saloon. It was called a Bonanza, and from the look of the business that was being transacted at both bar and gambling tables, the name was a fitting one. I was taken upstairs and shown into a quite gaudily furnished room. Sitting behind a table was one of the largest men I've ever seen, literally shoveling food into his mouth. 
Uh, lolling on a couch nearby, a woman of rather extraordinary proportions was sipping champagne. Oh, Crandall. How's your dinner? And I was having it. Uh, there was a slight interruption. What's the matter with you, Jerry? Ain't you got no manners? Well, it ain't our fault, Big Sam. He wasn't going to come. That's right. We, we had to persuade him. I right, go on and get out. Grab a chair, Kendall. All right, Mary, get a plate. Give Mr. Kendall some of them lamb fries. Best dog on lamb fries you ever ate, Kendall. Go ahead, sit down. <laughs> this here's Millie. Best looking gal this side of Chicago. How do you do? I'll tell you what I want to see you about, Kendall. I figured you want to write something about me in that London paper yarn. Take your lamb fries, Mr. Kendall. Oh. Yes, uh, thank you. Thank you. Champagne, Millie. I see the Rocky Mountain Gazette says you're in town, Kendall. That was a fine thing you done for that kid the other day. Fine thing, yeah. No good scissor bill cream jumpers got what they had coming. Should have hung them, though. What'd he do? I ain't read the paper. Shut your mouth, Millie. Where's your champagne? Here's your champagne, Mr. Kendall. Thank you. Now go lie down and don't bother us. So like I say, Kendall, I'm a pretty big man in these parts, and I figure folks... Read your paper and want to know. Well, is there something particularly interesting about you? I mean, huh? aside from the fact that you own what is obviously a successful business. <laughs> hey, mister. This town only breathes when I tell it to. Ain't that so, Mel? Sure. That's right, Mr. Kendall. I got myself one of the biggest strikes in the country. Taking out better than a million dollars. How's that? Congratulations. The saloon, that's just a sideline with me, uh... I'm a man that's going a long way, Kendall. You write about me, it'll help. Sally? In what way? Well, uh, I've been thinking about going in for politics, maybe being governor. Now, a story about me written right, it looked pretty good for folks here and in Washington reading what you say about me all the way over in England. Well, I, I'm afraid I couldn't be of much help. Why not? I don't write what people want me to write. I'll pay you a thousand. I don't think so. Thank you. Oh, sit down. You ain't even tasted your lamb fries. Some other time. Good night. Hi, Kim. He going or staying, Big Sam? Staying. Well, now, you go on back inside, huh? Tell you what, Kendall. I'll pay you $2,000. Easiest money you'll ever make. Sorry. Look, I, I'm being nice to you. I ain't used to people saying no to Big Sam. Well, I'd say now's as good a time as any to start getting used to it. Mill, go to bed. I ain't sleepy. Get sleepy. Kendall and me want to be alone. Good night. Good night. She's a good gal. All right, what's your proposition? Oh, my, I haven't got one. Twenty-five hundred. No. Listen, boy, I run, Helen. Now, you do what I say. Or? Ain't no use of us whittling, and I like you. Now, what do you want? A newspaper here in Helen? I'll buy you one. <laughs> You're wasting your time. Maybe you ain't hurt. It don't pay to get Big Sam Hobday on the prod. Uh, Hobday? I'm getting tired of this nonsense. You might as well get it through that skull of yours once and for all. I haven't any intention of writing a glorification of your political charms. Understand? Uh, then uh, I'm going to have to teach you why they call me Big Sam. Hmm? Overwhelming desire to see if, if that stomach of yours is as big a piece of blubber as I think it is. Oh. He must have weighed 280 pounds. But I found out very quickly that looks can be deceiving. There wasn't any fat on him. He was as hard as rock. So were his fists. I vaguely remember getting in a beauty on his nose. Then something sloshed me over the left ear. And I was finished.
moment, we return to Frontier Gentlemen. Now we return you to the Anthony Ellis production of Frontier Gentlemen. I woke up to find myself lying in a very large bed. The lady named Millie billowed over me, applying a wet cloth to my head. Behind her, I could see Big Sam Hobday. He had a fat lip and looked worried. Hey, you come out of it, huh? Yes. Yes, so I have. I feel. I've got a headache. That Tucson, he could have killed you. Uh, Tucson? And it wasn't you? Ain't you never been pistol whipped? Uh, him and Jeffers come busting in just when we was going good. Kendall, I sure do admire your punch. Uh, uh, I'm going to have to have a little talk with that gentleman. Oh, don't you worry none about that. I told him plenty. Yes, I'll bet that made an impression. Mill, go get Mr. Kendall some coffee. Sure. You just take it easy, Mr. Kendall. Millie will be right back with the coffee. Uh, sure glad to see you up. I thought for a while you'd seen the pale horse. Uh, let's go into the other room. Uh, how about a drink? Name your poison. Uh, Brandy? Sure. You're all right, Kendall. And when Big Sam says so, he means something. Now, I, I want to do something for you. I think you've already done more than enough. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're all right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Now, uh, how about it? How about what? You writing a piece on me? I thought we'd settle that. We ain't settled nothing. Uh, must we go through it again? I told you, I write only the way I see things, not as you or anybody else wants me to. Then, y- you ain't gonna do it? Oh, I'll send a story about all this, but I don't think you'll like it. But you're stubborn as a bobtail mule. Yeah, no doubt. Now, if I can have my gun, please, I'd like to go back to the hotel. You ain't going nowhere, Kendall. I've been real friendly to you, and I asked you a favor, polite and nice, and you turned me down. Why well, ask you no more? I'm telling you. Big Sam wants you to write what he says to write. <laughs> yes. Well, you tell Big Sam there's not a chance. Shepard! Tucson! That's the trouble with me. I'll get easy with folks like you. They take the bit in their case. Something you want, Big Sam? Oh, sure, there's something I want. How can you figure I'll call you? Now, I'll get some rhyme paper, quill and ink. Kendall here is going to work. Sure, sure. Tucson, you stay here. I'll be right back. How about you sit down, Kendall? <laughs> yeah. Uh, that's fine. Don't you do nothing to make me shoot you. Big Sam will be awful mad. Ooh, perish the thought. Here's your coffee, Mr. Kendall. Thank you, Millie. You sure are welcome. Tucson, how come you're holding a gun on Mr. Kendall? I'm watching him for Big Sam. Oh. You know, Mr. Kendall, you shouldn't ought to wrangle with Big Sam. He's a real loving man when you get to know him, that is. Why don't you do like he says, huh? It'd make him real happy to be a governor. But it would make me very unhappy. Oh. Tucson, put away that gun. Look here now, Kendall. I brought Sheriff Downer. He just happened to be passing by. Hello, Sheriff. Mr. Kendall, sure is nice seeing you again. You walked out so quick after bringing in them claim jumpers, I never did get a chance to properly thank you. Uh, Sheriff could tell you about me, Kendall. I could for a fact, Big Sam. Sheriff thinks I make a doggone good governor, don't you, Downer? Well, what I think ain't so much, Big Sam, it's the people that count. Hey, you see? Now, we all know what a fine thing it'd be if that London Times of yourn says a lot of purry English words about Big Sam Hobday. Just a point of information. Sheriff, are you aware that I am being held here against my will? Oh, sure is. As a citizen, I've been keeping you for the sheriff because you disturbed the peace. <laughs> I disturbed the peace? That's right. I invited you up for a peaceable talk and you jumped me. 
That's again the law in hell, and I ain't that right, Donner? If a man wants to bring a complaint, I guess it is. I'm a fair man. Don't hold no grudges. As far as I can see, no harm done. So you write what I want, and I don't swear out no complaint. <laughs> you know, if I didn't have more respect for the people I've met in the territory, I'd do it. What does that mean? Uh, the answer is still no. Down and take him over to the jail. Oh, now... I got my rights. I'm sorry, Mr. Campbell. That's all right. And while we're at it, I want to serve a counter-complaint against Big Sam. (laughs) Same charge. (laughs) If I go to jail, he goes to... We'll settle it in court. (laughs) My word against his. The judge is going to believe you, Kendall. I'm Big Sam. I'll take the chance. You arrest me, Sheriff. You arrest him, too. Yeah. He's in his rights, Sam. What do you mean in his rights? He ain't got no rights. You do like I say, Donner, we're getting a new sheriff. Well, I got to uphold the law, Sam. If I take him, I got to take you. He's made a complaint. Donner, you get me hog wild. I'm mighty sorry, Sam. You gonna do like I say? Well, I, I can't. I swore to uphold the law. Took an... You remember when I was swore in? I'm warning you, Donner. It don't make no difference. All right. <laughs> Hey, well, what's the matter with the sheriff? You and Tucson lay him on the bed inside. Mill, go take care of him. Felt like maybe I broke his jaw, poor fella. Now, Kendall, you see how it is around here. Why don't you just fall off and cool your saddle and write your piece? The boys will keep you company. Jeffers? Yeah? I'm going downstairs for a while. You and Tucson keep an eye on things. Kendall, you have that finished when I get back, you hear? You heard what Big Sam told you? Uh, yes. Oh, yes. Now, how's the sheriff? He's fine. Didn't break a thing. He'll be coming around. Now, you get going, huh? I'll put the paper and the quill there on the table. I may need some help. What kind of help? Oh, things about Big Sam's background... Was past. Well, Tucson here can tell you. You've been with him longer than me. Good. Good. Uh, now, um, where was he born? Well, Kansas, I guess. Here as I can remember. Uh, Kansas, huh? Eh? How old is he? Ed, how old is he? I don't know. Help. He never said. What did he do before he came to Helena? Well, lots of things. Some maybe he wouldn't want you to write. (laughs) Helpful. I'll just use my imagination. I began to write. Flowery, revolting nonsense. Tucson came closer, leaning over my shoulder. From time to time, I asked him a question. I knew if I could take him off guard for just a moment, it would give me a chance to get his gun. I had filled almost two pages when the time came. Well, now, what do you think of this, Tucson? Uh, in Montana Territory, the flower of manhood... Has reached it. Uh, 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 perfect perfection that's right, that's right. in the mining town of Helen. I refer to a stal- stalwart, stalwart citizen who bears and with good reason. <laughs> Put your hands high over your head, Jeffers. Ah. I'll take your gun if you don't mind. Another patient for you, Florence Nightingale. Pick him up, Jeffers. Take him in there. Kendall, Big Sam ain't gonna like this. I have an idea there'll be quite a few things Big Sam won't like. 
This is the least of them. Move over, Sheriff, honey. You got company. I'm all right. Let me up. Millie, you souse him with water. Get him awake. I'm arresting him. And you, and you, Jeffers. Big Sam, too. Mr. Kendall, I'll ask you to be a witness at the trial. My pleasure, Sheriff. Hey, now, you, you can't arrest Big Sam. Listen, boy. Maybe I ain't the best sheriff in the country, but there ain't a man alive gonna bust me in the jaw and get away with it. Oh, he didn't mean nothing, Sheriff. He's just a big, playful puppy. Kendall! Tucson! Give her! Shall we break the news to the playful puppy? Sam, I'm arresting you for doing me a bodily harm. You're fired, Donner. I'm firing you right now. Roll your blankets and pull freight out of here. We'll let the judge decide that. The judge did decide, strangely enough, against Big Sam and his boys. Seven days in jail and $200 fine. It was a small thing, but it broke Sam Hobday's hold on Helena. The whole town stood against him, and he knew it. I sent the story off to the Times, but I don't think that it will improve Big Sam's chances for governorship of Montana Territory. Mm-hmm.